Hi, welcome again to uh, the video series of uh, Open Form for Beginners. If so, if you are new to Linux or and new to Open Form, so I say again, new to Linux and new to Open Form. So this uh, video series is for you. Okay, so previously we have learned how to copy the cavity folder into our file, and we you know we find out. Oops, sorry, we find out uh, what our what all these commands are talking about. So this is a make directory command. This is a change directory command, and this is a copy command. And with the ar function, it will help us to copy the entire folder properly. So that's a, these are the basic explanation. So next step. Now, according to this, it says cd cavity. So we are already inside the uh, our new folder. So let's uh, go to the cavity folder. So in, when you see this zero constant and system files inside the cavity folder, you are in the right place. Now, what is next? So we want to explore the block mesh command today. So what is block mesh? Well, um, to understand what block mesh is, you must know what a uh, finite element analysis is. So if you're not sure what finite element analysis or FEM is, I'll have a link in the video below, or rather in the description section. That, is a, that it shows a very uh, good explanation of what a, a mesh is. Okay. So let me see. I think I've put it here somewhere inside this file. Oopsie. Yeah, so yeah, the video. Okay, so what does block mesh do? Um, well, OpenFoam actually solves a lot of differential equations through finite element analysis. So we have talked about that already. What, uh, what is finite element analysis? There'll be a video for that. So inside this video, what we are basically doing is chopping up the entire problem into tiny bits, into individual blocks. So for us, we'll have to tell OpenFoam to do that. And that's what the block mesh command is for. And how how do we tell OpenFoam how to set up the uh, how to chop up the problem or do a proper meshing? So we can go into the one of these folders to find the block mesh file. Anything to do with block mesh. So let's try system first. Take a look, and we see we see these uh, following folders, or rather following files. Uh, block mesh dict control dict fv schemes and fv solutions so the relevant folder for uh, at least for this 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 discussion is the block mesh dict file which you are seeing here and to you know take a look at what is inside we can use the vi editor so that is vi here vi is a text editor in linux it's one of the most common text editors it may be a little bit uh, hard to use at first, but it is very good for like viewing files and at least uh, for basic editing purposes. So let's do block mesh dict. Okay, vi block mesh dict. Or if you want, you can use the tab button to help you finish the spelling correctly. So let's do vi block mesh dict. Okay, then we are inside. And what we see is all this. Now, it may seem like a random bunch of numbers now, but uh, sooner or later we will come and learn what these numbers are about. But the idea here is that uh, where your mesh is set up, how you, how you tell OpenFoam to uh, set up the problem correctly, to chop up the problem uh, correctly, it will be in this folder. <coughs> so let's escape and to escape, we to uh, exit this file we press escape first and then colon q so you see colon q you see at the bottom right hand corner uh, bottom left hand corner so let's do it again escape colon q so and then we'll press enter and then we have escaped without saving so uh, typing colon q in vli vi colon q if you type that in the vi editor that tells it to quit without saving. So again, I open the file, I escape, I press the escape button, ESC, escape, 
and colon Q and then press enter. So that's how you open and close files for reading using the VI editor. So that's what block mesh tick is. So let's go to the cavity folder, cd dot dot. Now we are in this system. Now we will type the command block mesh. So that will tell uh, OpenFoam to generate the mesh or and chop up the problem in the right sizes, the correct sizes, as uh, you, have, you would have seen in the other video. So if you are not, please uh, go and see it, or at least get an idea of what it is about. So press enter. And that uh, indicates that the uh, block mesh file has been running correctly. So that's ls. Yep. So these are the same three folders we have here, but uh, we have uh, the correct block meshing or rather yeah we have already generated the system mesh so that is part one I'm just explaining to you what each step is so we can learn all right what is this next step um, icofoam what is icofoam okay icofoam is the incompressible ICO I think ICO stands for incompressible I could be wrong but that's how I remember things so ICO foam, ICO foam. Okay, just spell it right. ICO foam will tell open foam to start solving the equations. So let's type that. And if it's running correctly, it should be showing you this. So let's take a look. Yes, you should see uh, these folders uh, appear if you run ICO foam correctly. And now, well, okay, you have all this data. Um, that is generated by OpenFoam. Uh, how do you, you know, see where the data is? Okay. Um, well, the thing is, uh, you will probably want to use Paraview to navigate to this folder. Okay. But how are we going to do that? How are we going to uh, find the folder using the Windows Explorer? Because Paraview, Paraview, this is a when you open Paraview up, so I'm going to open Paraview up now. So you see, um, normally it will start at the desktop. Okay, so ignore, ignore what I have here because I've already set up the file correctly. <coughs> it will normally, normally, uh, um, it will nov normally navigate to the desktop. Okay, navigate to the desktop uh, on my documents. So these are very easy places. So ideally, your cavity file should be there. But if it is not there, don't worry. There's a workaround. So my workaround, my personal workaround is, okay, I'm going to minimize all the windows. Okay, I gotta minimize all the windows. All right. So what I have here is a shortcut. All right. So, what does this shortcut bring me to? This shortcut will bring me to wherever the main file, uh, file uh, system is for the Linux. So you see, uh, these files here are the same as these files here. Can you see? Open phone files, Anaconda 3. Okay, open phone files, Anaconda 3, and a bunch of other hidden files and folders. So if you don't know where this is, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to bring you through it. So it has, if you look at the address bar on top here, it has to do somewhere with the app data files. So let's go back. Okay, let's go to app data. And how do we find app data? Uh, you start from Windows, you go to users, and you go to your username, and you find app data. So okay, let's go track that down. C users your username and we have to find app data so that's the first part now you see app data is a hidden file or hidden folder so you have to make sure um, you have to make sure your files and folders are unhidden so that you can find where app data is if not uh, yeah I assume you know how to do this so now you are at app data what do you do all right I'm going to show you the full address 
So it tells you to go to local packages and okay, local and packages. So let's go local and packages. Where's packages? Here are packages. So so that's where your navigation should be. Uh, see users your username, app data, local packages. And then we'll need to look for Ubuntu on Windows, the canonical group limited. So this uh, file that says canonical group limited Ubuntu on Windows, that's the file you navigate to. Okay. So what's next? We need to go to local state, root FS, home, and that's where you are. So local state, look for the local state folder, go to the root FS folder, and go to Okay, I can't remember. I keep having to look back. Root FS home and then yeah. So this is your root folder inside uh, inside the Linux uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. If you type CD or CD forward slash, you are in the root folder. You see pin boot dev dev etc home in it blah 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 blah. You see bin boot dev all this. This is your root folder in Windows sub system for Linux. So cd forward slash will bring you to the same folder I'm showing you now. Can you see? Okay, so I'm gonna type cd to bring me back to the home folder. So I'm gonna type uh, press home here. And I'm gonna press uh, my username in Linux. And this is where the home folder is. So it's exactly the same folder here. So it is very convenient. You can just use a shortcut. So I'm going just going to press home. And I'm going to right click. You can do a send to desktop. Send to desktop. Send to desktop and create the shortcut. And okay. If you do that, you will have a shortcut on the desktop here, and that will uh, help you find the files easily. A shortcut is very useful. So you don't have to remember all of these things. Uh, that will sit here okay now with that what's the next step next step is that we want to visualize the file so this was an old folder i'm just old file i'm just going to delete that okay so we want paraview to read this so if you open paraview let's open paraview and we go to the desktop we can only see uh we can only see yes we can see the shortcut here and that's where we can find it but uh, my preference again my preference is to make another file, okay, to have a open form files for Windows. So I'm just gonna have this empty folder named open form files Windows, and then it's my preference just to copy, copy the files over here. So let me go to open form files using the Windows Explorer, and there's a cavity file right there. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing over. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna copy this whole thing over. But there's one step I forgot. We need to generate a file for um, Paraview to read. Okay, so I'm going to cd the open form files. cd cavity, and there we are. Now there was a last step on the openform.com. It says touch cavity.form. Now what this does is it makes a Paraview readable file. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that, touch, uh, touch, what, uh, cavity.foam. So cavity.foam will be a file that, um, that uh, Paravi will read. Just to demonstrate, I'm just going to name it slightly different. So it's, I'm going to type my cavity, uh, not, not my cavity, actually, that, yeah, I don't have, I hopefully don't have dental cavities. But anyway, that's a very lame pun joke. <laughs> Okay, touch my cavity dot foam. There you go. My cavity dot foam will be there. And now, since we have a Paraview readable file, let's copy everything over. Dum dum dum. That's a shortcut. I'm gonna open foam files. Cavity is there. I'm gonna copy, and I'm gonna paste here. Okay, so you see all the files here. All right, so I'm going to open it with open uh, form. 
Uh, let's see. Let's open up. And we're going to go to desktop. And we are going to go to um, open foam files windows. And cavity foam. Cavity is right there. <coughs> Double click the my cavity foam using the power view. And then it will open up. So nothing is uh, visible yet because you need to press this eye, eye thingy. See? See my cavity foam? And there's this eye thingy down here, which I think is kind of cute. Okay, so now we can see various things, not just the surface. We can see the uh, points here. We can see lots of, uh, there are many ways to visualize this file. So normally uh, we can use surface. And then what property do we want to see? Well, now we are seeing pressure. Um, we can change to U, which is the velocity. Okay, U is the fluid velocity, I believe. All right. So this is U when we see in the when you see. Remember, we are talking about chopping up the problem. You can see it's almost being pixelated here. So how that is done is uh. Use, it is done using the block mesh dictionary. Okay, yeah, so we have successfully run the cavity file and just explained to you what each uh, command was doing. So hopefully, yeah, uh, this was helpful in getting you started. So in future, we'll be looking towards other tutorial files. We'll try and, you know, just run them to basically see what they look like. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.